Yeah. Let me just jump in here for a second. When, no, when, you, when you want to say resident, okay, it, it comes from the word like residue, okay, like do, residue. It's something, it's, it's proof that something existed at one point in time in a specific place, or it's a place where you sit. So you reside, or it's residue. So when you leave a stain on a coffin, that's proof that you existed at one point in time at that specific location. Okay, that's basically what a resident means too as well. It means, were you there at that particular moment of time? It looks like you could say like the IRS or somebody's gonna claim that you owe something due to them because you resided there. Residue. Proof that you obtained a service, a good, or a product from us. Were you a resident of the county? Were you a resident of the state? Were you a resident of the nation? Where were you, where did you reside? Where did you sit for a while? There's proof that you sat there, there's the residue. Okay, so that's just a little bit more breaking down of the residue. What was the question you were asking Pacific, sir, about this? Uh, what was this man's name you said? Well, Howard Grizzles. Okay, great. Can you get back onto that, what he was talking about, this Howard Grizzles stuff? Right, and I think I, I, I did. I okay, think it was a conclusion. Was it the, conclusion was, the conclusion was that there is no necessity, or it could actually be damaging if you make the claim or you file a piece of paper that says, I no longer something that you thought I was. Right. I understand. I, you it's know, better to just say, it's better to say that I never was something that you thought I was. Well, try to be careful about never, using the word never. Try not to say that. Try to just make it fake, you know, like I said, like revenue. If they can prove that you did squat there, sat there, reside there, prove that you existed at that moment in time, just be careful about using absolutes. I like to think, make things ambiguous when I'm dealing with somebody who really has no right to even be talking or communicating with me in the first place. So, I see, I really don't get into too much semantics with these because, honestly, there is nobody other than another man that I have to answer to. So all this Howard Griswold stuff, or whoever this guy is, he's telling you what to do with the with um, foreign agents, foreign governments. The only government that I understand is my government under my jurisdiction, or my domestic authority. Everything else is foreign government, foreign agent, foreign jurisdiction to my domestic authority. My, this is my home, this is my boundary, this is my private sector. Once you move out, because like somebody was trying to do this, this ridiculous tax lien foreclosure stuff on Angela's show yesterday, and I heard about this, like, oh my God, this lady said, well, if you operate, this is for only people who operate in the private sector. But let me tell you what, the only thing I operate in the private sector is between me and my cattle, and maybe a couple of neighbors. Once I deal with the public at large, I am no longer operating in a private sector. If the government can control even one little minute transaction between me and somebody else, now I'm operating in the public sector. So somebody was going around and they mass email this nonsense, this uh, stop tax lien foreclosure, stop tax liens for other nonsense, and it says, the, the lady was smart, or whoever wrote this thing, because if you pay her $399, whatever it was that they were asking, they said, if you pay us and you don't understand whether or not you operate in a public sector or a private sector, we're not going to respond to your money. So, when you did, they say, well, do you operate in a private sector? Everybody thinks, well, yes, I work for Coca-Cola. That's private. Huh. You don't think private Coca-Cola is regulated by the government somehow? You don't think the government has some sort of control of what Coca-Cola does? Well, you better believe it does. So when they say, well, look at all the private sector jobs that are gone. What private sector? Private sector is like a uh, an Amish guy dealing with another Amish guy. That's private. Now, now, a neighbor dealing with a neighbor, that's private. That's, the government has no control over that whatsoever. But there's almost no such thing as a private sector job in this country anymore. So they say, well, you, the government can't get involved with private sector. That's right. There's like three people left that operate in the private. Everybody else is public. So I don't know if you guys seen this thing. It's that, uh, oh, what was that mass email that everybody sent? Because I was on Angela's mailing list and uh, uh, stopped that. I just laughed at it. There are so many ways that these people are going to keep your money. Just with these simple words that I read in the contract that says, look, you must, you know, before you give us your money, you must be this, you can't do this, to this, to this, to this. The very first thing that they said was, um, to qualify, here, let me see, stop fedtaxleans.com. The first thing it says, those who work at this website was created for Americans, Yankee Doodles, who work in the private sector. There you go. Almost nobody works in the private sector. Almost nobody. But if you look Google and say private sector, well, private sector means without government control. 
public sector. That's right. The public sector means if there is any government control. And I'm telling you, almost any thing you do in the world nowadays, you've got to believe the government has a voice in it or opinion in it. They control it somehow. Because they control it. Even, even if, yeah, even if a corporation is a corporation that's operating under a government charter, which means it's operating under public scrutiny, which means it's not totally private. Right. So I'm just yeah. warning. At best, at best, it's a hybrid. At best, it's a hybrid. So be careful when you people see these people like uh, Charles Kowalski. Who's this guy that he just said? Craig. What is the guy's name? The, the uh, Google. Griswold. Griswold. There you go. I think I should think the National Lampoon. Griswolds. So when the Griswold folks try to give you all these wonderful solutions, what in the world are you dealing with the public entities anyway? If, if you don't want to be under government control, why are you communicating to them first? It's like I explained to you with Santa Claus. Why are you people sending communications to them first? Wait for them to send something to you. And then say, hi, who are you? Who are you to me? Am I in the public sector? Do you believe I'm in the public sector? Do you want to believe I'm under some sort of government control? As far as I know, I'm operating in the private sector. Is there some way that you have jurisdiction over me? Please inform me of how that I am bound by some sort of government control or authority. Thank you for your communications, and I'll be looking forward to hearing you soon. See how nice that was? Instead of saying extortion and all this other stuff? Yes. Lovely. It's lovely. <laughs> it's very cool. The first five sentences were very informative when he first started talking about it. Well, oh, what I did? No, Greg. Oh, Greg? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because Greg, like I said, he knows these, um, these um, Google people. He knows. He, he researches this stuff like crazy. Yeah. So he searches this stuff and he comes back to me and he's like, oh wow, look cool, da, 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 da. and then I just punch a million holes in it. So he's like, oh darn, and then he goes find another thing. And then he comes back and says, oh look what I just read today, da, 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 da. and I punch a million holes in it. He's like, oh darn, 